There's videos that will scare you, and then there's videos like these ones that will scare you forever. Number 5. It was August 7th of 2017 when a Twitter user named Adam Ellis began posting about David, the child with a caved-in head who first came to him in a highly realistic nightmare. Through a series of vivid dreams, Adam was able to learn that David had passed away in a terrible incident. The dreams of David's disfigured image were real enough to keep Adam awake at night, and when his cats began gathering around his door at midnight, sometimes all four of them, it dawned on him that David was more than just his imagination, and his pets weren't just staring at the door. They were communicating with something that was standing on the other side. I would definitely think something was up if my cat sounded like this at the same time every night. and then it moves even closer. Cats are supposed to be very in tune with the supernatural, and since this is always at the front door, it looks like David is trying his best to move in. The bad dreams and the midnight visits continued for the rest of the month without abating, but only when Adam went on a business trip did the paranormal routine really ramp up. He installed a home camera system to watch his cats while he was gone, but instead he unexpectedly ended up using it to watch David. Apparently the spirit had taken the opportunity to claim his apartment as its own while he was gone, as evidenced by what you're about to see next. On August 28th, 2017, he recorded a live feed as a green chair rocks back and forth with nobody in it. It couldn't have been an open window because he closed them all before he went on the trip. Then as soon as the chair stops moving, the turtle shell falls behind the bookshelf for no reason at all, or at least none that he was wanting to acknowledge at first. David is too scared to think straight, so he puts his phone away and forgets about it for the rest of his vacation. Either one of these incidents would be weird by itself, but both in rapid succession seems too much of a coincidence to me. The madness continued until one night in October of 2017, David came out of Adam's dreams and to the window. The picture shows the faintest image of a child staring back at him. You can barely see it, but Adam says it's him, David. And if you still don't see it, a Twitter user enhanced the picture for a better look. David is in front of the bars and almost inside. I'm not going to lie, it kind of looks like a doll to me, although its head looks perfectly fine, not caved in at all. This is where things don't exactly add up. On November 6, 2017, he says David appeared in his apartment and made him feel paralyzed, but at the same time he could move his hands enough to grab his phone and take a picture. David is supposed to be crawling towards him, but somehow, despite the limited use of his hands, he manages to take a series of perfectly centered photographs, and two of the pictures are at different heights, so I guess Adam was paralyzed but somehow able to sit up. It doesn't make sense exactly. Still, nevertheless, having someone peeking through your bedroom window is certainly a nightmare. It's years later and he still says that this is all real. Number 4. On April 8, 2018, a group of seven friends travel to a large tunnel in Mira Mesa, California that is legendarily haunted. Thumps, whispers, and even the voice of a little girl who may have been trapped during a flood are all said to be heard down there. So it comes as no surprise when they start hearing before they even get inside, possibly warning them to come no closer. Caesar, open the, no, get, no. They are barely deep inside at all when I hear a girl yelling something here at 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, they go further and soon need their lights to see. They keep hearing whispers, but they aren't sure if it's the wind or water, so they are taking extremely small steps at this point to hear every sound. Everyone is being as quiet as they can, and that's when they hear two loud footsteps right in the middle of their group that none of them make. Something is standing with them. And this raspy whisper does not sound like any of them at all. Talking. I'm not kidding, by now they feel surrounded by spirits and they may have really gone way too far. They talk about turning around but decide they didn't drive two hours all the way out here to turn around now and that's when something makes their decision for them. What's crazy is that these footsteps don't even echo. Definitely paranormal. <laughs> what the <laughs> 
The group goes running back, but even though they are terrified, they can't resist going a little further and seeing what's ahead of them one last turn. That's when they find an overhead pipe that is essentially small and slimy, and their light explorer is above. I think they might finally see a spirit here at 2 minutes and 38 seconds. It looks almost like it's wearing an old helmet of some kind, or maybe it was just his light bouncing off the walls. He returns the next month on May 9th with different friends and even higher expectations than before. Expectations that are met and exceeded. Voices again greet them at the entrance and you can hear a girl's voice really clearly here after he's finished talking about how scared this place makes him. It's really dark right now. I'm scared. Oh my gosh, they can't flash a light in front of my face. It's too bad. This time, they are more prepared and assign someone to keep guard behind them so they aren't surprised again. After six and a half minutes, something new happens. Technical difficulties with the camera could be from electromagnetic disturbances given off by paranormal energy whenever a particularly powerful spirit is near. And I don't think it's a coincidence that they hear this deep and loud groan exactly one minute later. Okay. They are all getting really scared at this point, so they grow quiet and press on. They reach the same part of the tunnel where they heard running footsteps before, and again hear something in front and behind. Okay, now we heard it from both sides. Alright, let's go. Not wanting to join the ranks of the spirits below, they quickly get out of there before anything more serious happens. I think at this point, after watching two different group of friends going from skeptical to scared out of their minds, we can definitely conclude that the Mira Mesa Tunnel is beyond haunted. Both videos don't have a lot of views despite being more than a year old, so the fact that he would drive two hours to visit the place again says to me that he is doing this because it's genuinely haunted instead of trying to make a viral video. All in all, there's over half an hour of raw footage between the two trips that's worth taking a look at. There really are too many paranormal moments for me to cover in one countdown. Number 3. On July 23rd, 2018, a paranormal investigator named Sunny Deeds teams up with Summer and CJ Fashion to explore an extremely haunted location known only as the Bradford House. Sunny Deeds learned of this location from a close friend. It's never been documented before. They don't say exactly where it is to protect the privacy of this small sleepy town, but according to local legend, this house once drove a family to madness and then sat abandoned for the past 15 years. Doors slamming, footsteps, and other paranormal activity made them flee the home. The first thing the three of them find is the doll, scalped with the eyes missing too. Somebody seems to have disassembled her, hopefully some kids and not a psycho in the nearby woods. It looks recent too. The inside looks like the family left in a hurry without taking anything, just like what the locals said happened. The dishes had been left too dry without even being put away. There's also Christmas lights. You don't do dishes and decorate the house unless you're planning to stay there for a while, so something bad must have forced them out quickly. As they explore the garage, Sunny Deed's camera gets blurry, even though there's nothing for it to focus on. Almost like something standing in front of him that he can't see, but the camera can, and the way it goes away as soon as he comments on it is definitely suspicious. Almost like the spirit is intentionally doing this to mess with him. Was a pencil sharp. <laughs> hey, CJ, CJ, look at my... What? Uh, just cleared up. I was blurry. Were you really? Yeah. This isn't the only time that his camera mysteriously goes out of focus. He always points it out to CJ, and it always goes back to normal immediately after. Letting you know it's bad. CJ! Ah, God, dude. The weirdest incident of all occurs when he is in this musty room with a flimsy floor. He hears two squeaking noises. Listen. The squeaks could have been a loose board or something because the floor is starting to cave in. Still, it's eerie and odd that the camera blurs as soon as he turns and asks out loud what the noises are. And given the history of the Bradford house, probably not a coincidence either. Eight days later, Sunny Deeds returns to the Bradford house on a hot July night to do a little investigating solo style. But even though it's hot outside, an unexplainable passing chill sweeps over Sunny Deeds in the dining room. 
I don't care how good an actor you are, there's no way to raise the hairs on your arms by will. He decides to try and make contact with the spirit in this room, and I think it might actually work. Hello? Before you say this is dust, keep in mind that this is the only orb you see in the entire 20 minute video, so it's too much of a coincidence not to mention. Sunny Deed says he doesn't want any trouble and takes a step into the next room, but something apparently doesn't want him to go in there. And when he goes to follow the noise, you can see all of the cabinets are open. This must have been exactly how the family felt. But that's not all. At 4 minutes and 24 seconds, this shower curtain is definitely closed. Approximately 5 minutes later, he notices they've been pulled back. When he steps inside, he hears honestly one of the scariest things I've ever talked about on this channel. As he slowly approaches the shower, a voice clearly says I'm here no less than three times. Hello? I'm here. If this is what the family had to go through, then I fully understand why nobody has lived here for 15 years. Number 2. In July of 1973, Clara and Phil Dandy moved into this unassuming farmhouse bordering the woods of Hinsdale, New York, thinking that it would be a nice cozy place to raise their children. They would hardly last for more than a year. Their troubles began within days of moving in, minor annoyances like constant hang-up phone calls and cabinet doors getting left open, and then not so minor things like a soft chanting coming from deep in the woods. Soon apparitions were roaming the 100-year-old house along with faces in the windows. As the weeks dragged into months, they recruited the help of a clergyman named Father Alphonse to cleanse the house, upon which they claimed to have felt a scream rattle the walls, followed by a period of calm. However, the peace and quiet lasted only a few days before the spirits returned in full force, forcing the devastated Dandy family to move out 13 months later in October of 1974. The house has chewed through a few more families since then. None of them stayed for long, but nobody knows what they saw. The house couldn't sell and fell into a state of disrepair until 2015, when a paranormal investigator named Daniel Clace purchased it for him and his team to conduct their research. Daniel is an author, speaker, and paranormal documentary maker who co-founded the Western New York Paranormal Society in 2012. He has been interested in the paranormal his whole life, and that's why these videos seem legitimate, starting with this one in the downstairs bedroom. These spheres of light could be dust particles, or they could be spirit orbs that appear when the air becomes charged with paranormal energy. One thing that's weird is they are always moving straight up, all of them, and sometimes two at a time. This live camera feed is over 30 minutes long, and not once does an orb move downwards. That's definitely odd. And remember, I said faces are seen in the window. Well, I think this might be one of them, black eyes and all. Daniel uploaded the next video after he let a different team of ghost hunters investigate, a group called the Warriors of the Paranormal. They didn't want to miss anything, so they slept in shifts. One of them named Bobby Ann is asleep on the couch when this appears over her. A closer view only presents more questions. I see tiny ears but the face is blacked out and it has no visible eyes or a mouth. It looks like it could have been fur, but that could also be bare skin. It's not a raccoon or a small dog, but those are the only two things it even remotely resembles. Maybe it could be a hand puppet, but there's no room for a second person to lay beside her, and she is facing the camera with the covers over her, so it can't be her. And it almost definitely can't be a wild animal, because I think even the deepest sleeper would wake with something so close. This is a different view from behind the couch. Bobby Ann turns in her sleep and looks at what's wrong with her arm. This part looks like their arm, but this circled part looks like something entirely different as it raises up then disappears, so maybe it was part of the blanket or something. But this rising dark apparition definitely is not. I don't know about you, but that definitely looked like some shadow person activity, or maybe edited. Either way, I've saved the creepiest part of all for last. Check out this ghostly figure standing over the couch. It looks like a little girl in a dress with her head down, watching.
I bet you didn't notice, but she was there all along. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next 5 seconds? Because I upload 4 new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. Number 1. Parker and Chester of a paranormal YouTube channel called Life of Luxury go to investigate the residence of Jennifer, a woman who has been living by herself for weeks in her parents' winter home. Only recently has she begun to hear something rustling underneath where she sleeps, an angry thumping noise, like something trying to break out from beneath the floorboards. <laughs> the only room under hers is the basement. She doesn't know if it's an animal or what, but she wants it gone in hopes the Life of Luxury crew can help. They investigate the downstairs area and soon find a perfectly rectangular slab of wall is mysteriously missing to form an entrance to another room, one that you have to crawl on all fours to get through. This section has been walled off, but why you would create a new room with no doors is my question. Chester and Parker decide to put a camera in each bedroom and downstairs in the basement at 1.30 in the morning. They catch something that will scar you for life, an adult-sized man who crouches on all fours and behaves like an animal. Both of these shots show a face with no eyes and a bizarrely shaped mouth. At 7 minutes and 52 seconds, you can see it's wearing some kind of cloth and is therefore at least partially human. It clangs around downstairs for a bit and then goes back to its corner. On the second night, it comes out of its hiding spot again and this time you get a much better look at its face here at 2.43 am. Look at this image. It doesn't look like a mask and again I see no eyes. The mouth looks way too wide and all of its teeth are gone. Earlier that day, Chester and Parker sealed off its exit and it became enraged. It bangs the solid piece of wood with all its might. It appears he feels no pain. And when that doesn't work, it claws its fingernails against the surface, again feeling nothing at all, howling like a wild animal. When that doesn't work, it decides to signal its displeasure to Jennifer upstairs. Somehow it seems to know she's there, and responsible for this, it's telling her to let it out. After 10 minutes of trying to get out, it finally succeeds and breaks into the upstairs room. It's a scary sight for sure, but this part looks like it could have been done using a green screen. The way this material rips instead of breaks more closely resembles paper than solid wood. When Chester and Parker go into Jennifer's room, for some reason it's under the bed and there's no hole that I can see. Overall, I think these events have been terrifying, but I do have some questions. Chester and Parker say that they drove Jennifer to her second house after this and tried to tell her parents who wouldn't listen. For one, I don't know why Jennifer didn't simply go to her second house as soon as she thought something was in the basement. Two, I don't know why they agreed to stay for a second night after seeing something so scary and dangerous on the first. They must be incredibly brave. And 3. How did they even manage to fall asleep for another night after learning what was down there? I know Jennifer must have been used to hearing noises by that point, but for her to remain asleep for 10 minutes while that creature pounds hard enough to break through the floor is concerning. Anyway, the creature itself does appear to have no eyes, nor am I able to see any teeth. But just because I don't think it's real doesn't mean I'm right. I'm sure there are counterpoints to everything I've mentioned. So please don't be afraid to disagree with me and be sure to let me know why. I'm telling you not to watch these videos in the dark if you know what's good for you.